All right, guys, let's check out the Nevada Aggression. This is the H6007M. This is the watch that I spec'd out, actually, with the help of uh, one of my buddies in my uh, private Discord group, David. He kind of picked this one out. I'm like, hey, because he, he was a fan. I, I met up with him in Vegas. We had breakfast together, and he brought it up. And I'm like, well, let me reach out to the, the guys over at Nevada, and uh, I'll check it out. And he's like, well, if you can check out this one, and that is this actual model. So here we go. So big, also big thanks to Sam over at Nevada Gretchen for hooking me up. I met him uh, at the San Francisco wind-up show. So if you're ever around any of those worn and wound wind-up shows, stop in and check them out because they will have a bunch of watches there and they're very knowledgeable. They will show you around and uh, you can get a good feel for the brand, hands-on, because that's about the only place you're going to be able to actually see them. So... What do we have here? We have a 38 millimeter case. The bezel is 39. It overhangs the case just slightly. Uh, 46 and a half lug to lug. You can see the side profile there. Angles down nicely, fully brushed on the side. You have very nicely done, polished, like almost like triangles on the lugs, the way they're angled. And it's just that nice little um, change of finishing on the material very sharp line drilled lugs on this guy it is 14 millimeter thick but keep in mind this is a chronograph with a box double dome sapphire crystal so 14 mil is actually pretty thin it is a manual line not an automatic so it would be even thicker if it was automatic 20 millimeter lug with bracelet tapers down to 18 you have that beads of rice style fully polished in the center brushed on the outer flanks and then you have i had not sized this but it looks to be if I'm not mistaken, this is a split pin design. It might be a pin and collar. Uh, I don't know. It kind of looks like a split pin to me. Uh, 6.9 millimeter screw down, uh, excuse me, push pull crown, not a screw down crown. So 100 meter water depth rating on this. Uh, like I said, manual wind movement, you're traditionally not going to have a screw down crown, and that is definitely the case here. Weighing in, not sized, so all links weighing in at 138 gram. You have that aluminum bezel insert is a bi-directional friction fit bezel. A little loose on the friction fit, so don't count on uh, precise timing on that if you're going to wear the watch because even some rubbing on your sleeve or something will probably move its position. So there is that. Uh, let's see, broad arrow hands on this guy. So if we zoom in on this one, you'll see a very well done executed nod to the history of the brand. You have that massive broad hour hand there, and then a nice uh, polished handset there with the sharp pointer of the minute hand. And then we have a sweeping chronograph. I did start the chronograph a while ago. As you can see, it's keeping count there at the 3 o'clock position with the uh, chronograph timer there. And then on the 9 o'clock position is a running seconds hand. Inside, the movement is a Salida SW510BH, and I did pull the case back off and videoed the movement. So at the very end of the video, I will drop that in. So stick around for that. It'll be after the loom shot. This one's called the Chronomaster Aviator Sea Diver, as you can see clearly on the bottom of the dial there. And then it says L Swiss. So a lot of historical... Uh, nods on this guy for sure. It's like nearly true one to one of the old original models. This brand's been around since what, like 1929, something like that. Love the profile of the bezel as well. It's fully polished on the top part, brushed or uh, blasted on the inside, but uh, it lines up with the case really nice, the angles of it and everything. So very cleanly done. Yeah. So if we do the chronograph pushers here, we can stop it and then we can reset. It just instantly snaps back. So it is a uh, cam operated, right? So it's not a column wheel, it's the cam operated one. You'll be able to see that when I do the, the video at the end with showing the movement. I did throw this on the time grapher. Insane, really good, through like 330 amplitude, which in case you don't know, that's like a really healthy movement. That's a sign of a healthy, healthy movement, anything around three to 330 or something like that, depending on the movement. And runs dial up plus three seconds, so extremely accurate as well. Retail price on this on bracelet, $1,900. If you get it on a leather strap or some other strap options, I'll put a link down below to the website so you can check out the different options. Uh, you'll save yourself a little bit of money. It's like 1790. 
I say just get the bracelet and then you can uh, add the straps if you want later or add your own variant of strap being that it's a 20 millimeter uh, lug width you'll be able to find something that'll work awesome with this thing so let's pop this on wrist real quick uh, I'll have to show you the clasp too once I take it back off but here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist like I said it didn't size it so it's, it's loose on me but not crazy loose I just brought the micro adjust in there's four micro adjusts in the clasp but uh, so like a link out of each side and I think I would be good to go and then bring the micro adjust back out all right so it is a friction fit clasp so again staying true to their history uh, it's stamped in the center part but the outer part of the clasp here, the main clasp here, is fully milled and nicely polished with uh, brushing on top here with their brand logo there. And like I said, four micro adjust gives you more options. You have shorter links on this bracelet, so it should be easy enough to size. Here's a look at the case back as well. It is a screw down case back, of course. And I did accidentally scratch it a little bit when I was messing with it. Yeah, like over there, there's a little scratch on the case back because dang it, I slipped. Sometimes that happens. All right, let's kill the lights, check the loom, and then again, seriously, stick around, check out the movement because it is pretty cool. They they did uh, their own little bridge plate and stuff like that. So you have that faux patina that gives you that uh, warmer tone of green on the loom. The loom application is still really good. No problems there, but being a chronograph, I mean, it's not a diver, so don't expect it to be super long lasting. I doubt it'll last all night, but it's there and it works. Thanks for watching.